Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics C Mechanics Unit 1 Kinematics Part 2. And today we're going to be talking about uniformly accelerated motion. Things like gravity, things like uh, cars that are, or objects that are accelerating uniformly or at the same constant acceleration. Uh, we're going to, in, in terms of that, we're going to be looking at free fall problems. Uh, we're also going to be looking at non uniformly accelerated motion where the acceleration is actually changing. So let's get to it. Um, the first thing we're going to take a look at today is our equations. Okay, We do have some more equations in uniformly accelerated motion. They're the first three equations on your equation sheet. And they say the velocity final equals the velocity initial plus acceleration times time. We have uh, displacement or uh, position final equals position initial. You can call that displacement if you want. Plus velocity initial time plus one half at squared and the last one is velocity squared that's velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 a d or 2 times acceleration times the displacement and you can see this is what it looks like in terms of a graph where we have a position time graph accelerating that's going to be a linear velocity time graph as we take the derivative or the slope and as we take the derivative or slope of that velocity time graph, we're going to get constant acceleration. But this is not just what we're going to be doing here. We're also going to be looking at how to linearize these graphs. This is a very, very important concept to understand how to linearize graphs. And every single equation, I want you to see what it's going to look like to linearize that graph. You can see this first equation. If we think of this as y equals uh, m x, sorry, and we're going to actually talk about our mx as m times x. Our m, our slope is going to be the acceleration. Our x axis is going to be time plus our initial velocity, which is going to be our y-intercept. So on the x-axis, we're going to put time. On our y-axis, we're going to put velocity. And you can see the linear slope is going to be equal to the slope is going to be equal to the acceleration. Now when we take a look at the second equation here, which is dealing with position or the displacement and time, hopefully you can see how the position is going to be on your y-axis. We'll talk about that as position or displacement. You can see over here is going to be our m x. And so what are we going to graph on our x axis is not just time, but we're going to do time squared. So if they give us a bunch of times and positions, uh, we are going to square each one of those times. And what do you know, we're going to get a um, we're going to get a linear slope and that slope is going to be equal to one half of the acceleration. Okay, which means if we're talking about gravity, that would be one half of about 10, which is about a slope of about five if we were going to linearize gravity with that. You can take a look at this third equation. You can see our y is right here, and you can see we have our m and our x. And so what are we going to graph here is on our y-axis, we're going to graph our velocity squared. So every single velocity, we're going to square those values. On the x-axis, we're going to take a look at our displacement or our position right there. And what do you know? Our slope, we're going to get a linear slope because that's what we're trying to do. Our slope is going to be equal to 2 times the acceleration. And so this is a very important concept. Every single time you see an equation, please take a look at how you would linearize that data. Um, but we can also take a look at non-uniformly accelerated motion when our acceleration is actually changing. You can see down here with our graphs, our acceleration when it's constant, we call that uniform acceleration. When our acceleration is not constant, uh, and we call that non-uniform acceleration. And so how would we, what would we do if we had something like this is we got to go to our calculus. And of course, if we have our position time function, our velocity time is equal to the derivative of the position over the derivative uh, over the change in the time okay the, with respect to time the acceleration time function is going to be the derivative of the velocity with respect to time or the second derivative of the position with respect to time okay and we're going to take a look at a problem like that a little bit later on so let's take a look at a problem right here this is, says a race car which is a palindrome by the way a race car is going to be Starting from rest, which means we know the initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second, okay? 
and it's going to accelerate uniformly. That means we can use our constant acceleration equations. And our acceleration is constantly going to be 4.90 meters per second squared. Okay, And it says, what is the car's speed? So we're taking a look at the final speed. That's what we're trying to find after it has traveled 200 meters. So I know the change in the position or the displacement is equal to 200 meters. So what equation am I going to use here? Of course, I'm going to use my V final squared equals my velocity initial squared plus 2 times A times my change in my position, which is my displacement. And so I can plug in some of my numbers here. I am trying to find my final velocity. I know my initial velocity is 0 plus 2 times my acceleration is 4.90. That's three significant digits there. And my change in my position or my displacement is 200 meters. I can do that multiplication. I can square root to find my final velocity of 44.3. And of course, velocity is meters per second. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at another uniformly accelerated uh, equation problem, and that is how much time to take a mass of 2.5 kilograms to fall freely, which means I know the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and it's falling a distance, or we can say it's 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 change in its position or its displacement is going to be its final position minus its initial position. Now I have to determine what's positive, what's negative, and of course in this problem you can see I, I'm calling positive up, I'm calling negative down because I said gravity was a negative 9.81 meters per second squared, which means my final position is on the ground, it's zero meters. My initial position is 15 meters above the ground, which means my displacement was negative 15 meters because it fell. And we are dropping it, which means our initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. Which equation am I going to use? I'm going to use that kind of that middle equation, which is uh, x final equals x initial, or if you do the algebra, that's the change in the position or the displacement, plus velocity initial time plus one half a t squared. And hopefully you can see as I subtract that v naught, that v zero, I get negative 15 over here equals v initial time, so that's zero times time, plus one half of 9.81 t squared. And when I do all my algebra here, I divide by 9.81, I multiply by two, I square root, I end up getting a time of 1.75 seconds, okay, approximately. So that is how much time it took for this mass to fall. It would take the same amount of time neglecting air resistance that's going to fall uniformly. Okay, So let's go to this last problem where we have something happening where there's not uniform uh, acceleration because you can see how it says a the velocity function, okay, it, the velocity function v as a function of t is equal to r, capital R, minus capital S, t. And of course that r, that s, they stand for something. So the velocity function is going to be 5 minus 10 times t. That's my velocity function. Okay, But I can find, since this velocity function is a linear function, I can find out the acceleration as a function of time. So the acceleration as a function of time is going to be the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So I'm going to take the derivative. The derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of minus 10t is minus 10, which means Guess what? My acceleration is actually uniform. But remember, I, it might not have been uniform, especially when they give me an equation. Um, you can't just assume uniform acceleration, so you have to do your calculus. Okay? Now, I can also find the position as a function of time by taking the integral of the velocity as a function of time with respect to time. And so I'm going to take the integral of that r minus st. So of course I'm going to get rt minus one half st squared. Okay, Which means that is going to actually be, you can see the r stands for 5, so 5 times time, minus one half of the s, one half of 10. 
that's 5t squared. Okay, And so that will end up giving me my position time function. Now, I can find so many things with this. And remember, we didn't have to have uniform acceleration in this problem. We could have had different uh, acceleration. Now, I could find the acceleration at any point in time because the acceleration at any point in time is 10 meters per second squared, negative 10 meters per second squared, which is gravity. So this ends up being a gravity problem. I just stole one of these problems off of an AP exam to sh kind of show you. We could find things like the maximum height. Uh, how can I find the maximum height? Well, when this object hits its maximum height, we know its velocity is going to be zero, which means we can take a plug in a zero for the velocity time function. Zero equals five minus 10t which means that time is going to be half a second. There are so many things I can find with this. I can find positions, I can find maximums, minimums, all these things uh, as we go along. Now keep in mind, any, I'll say it again, anytime you get an equation, don't assume that it is uniform unless it says it. Well, hopefully that helped out. This is Kinematics Part 2, and have a great day. Catch you on the flip side.